So the topic here is secondary growth, which increases the width of the stem. And it's also important because it produces the vascular tissue, particularly the xylem and the phloem that help water and uh, nutrients move around inside the plant. Now, the cross-section of the stem, shown here from lecture, uh, has this thick uh, circle inside of it that represents the vascular cambium, and that's a cylinder of cells that go all the way up and down the stem, and they are meristematic, meaning that they are undifferentiated and they're undergoing cell division. All right, now what we're going to think about is we're going to look at a plant over three years of growth. Now, what we're looking at here is actually quite similar to a figure in your book, which is figure 34.21. Um, shows basically the same thing. And we're going to be interested in two types of cells that are produced as part of secondary growth, uh, the xylem, and we'll use X to represent the location of xylem cells, and also the phloem, and we'll use the letter P to represent the phloem cells. Now these are both, again, we'll cover these in more detail later in the course, but these are both vascular tissues that move water and nutrients in the plant. All right, now inside all of these circles, uh, there is a smaller circle that represents the vascular cambrium. So this is that circle of meristem cells. And we're, we're, we're looking uh, from the top down at this. So we're seeing just the very top of this cylinder of cells. And now the vascular cambium is in all of these drawings, but you notice that it gets bigger. Its diameter increases with each year that the plant grows. All right, another part of this is the outer layer of the plant called the cork, which is represented by this thick black line around the edge. Okay, now in year one, cells are going to be produced in the vascular cambrium, and the one on the, on the inside of that uh, meristematic tissue are going to turn into xylem. So we put an X on the inside, and on the outside they turn into phloem. And we'll use the number one to represent that these are the tissues made during year one. Okay. So now during year two, what happens? Well, we still have that xylem that was produced during year one, but now we produce a new layer of xylem, and that is going to be labeled correctly here, X2. So that means the xylem from year two, and then outside is the phloem from year two. So what happened to the phloem from year one, that P1 that we had labeled in the first part? Well, it's still there, but it has been crushed by this expanding ring of cells, and it actually those cells have now become part of the cork. So they're pushed out of the way by that new phloem that forms. Now, one thing I want to say about the xylem cells in the middle, in the gray area there, those are actually dead cells. Xylem is an interesting type of cell because it doesn't really work to conduct water until the cell has died and the cytoplasm has left and all that's left is the cell walls. All right, now here in year three, we have, uh, oops, correct this, we have the xylem that was made in year one, the xylem that was made in year two, and now we have a new layer of xylem, X3, labeled there. And then outside of the vascular cambium, we have the phloem from year three. And again, the phloem made in year two has been crushed. It's been pushed out of the way by this expanding ring of cells and is now part of the cork. All right. So the last thing to do is just to complete this list of the principles of plant growth. The first three we did in lecture, but number four kind of refers to what I said about the xylem cells, and that is that uh, many cells, and the xylem is a good example of this, many cells are dead at functional maturity. So functional maturity, what does that mean? It means after these cells have differentiated and elongated and assumed their normal function, the cytoplasm dies and just the cell, cell wall is left. And that's actually the part that is uh, the functional part of the cell. 